Hey, hey, Alex. That was holy. Honestly, that's like... That was crazy. That was like total craziness. Hey everybody, it's Alex from Alex and Erica's channel and we've been talking a little bit about the Mexican Riviera Cruise and today we're going to talk about Cabo San Lucas. Again, this is uh, typically your first or your third stop on a seven day Mexican Riviera cruise. Uh, having just done this cruise recently twice, we did this cruise in March and again in uh, May. And then prior to that, personally, I've probably done this itinerary 10 to 15 times, 12, 13 times, I think to be exact. It's a fantastic option, especially if you're on the West Coast or if you're closer to the West Coast and you, uh, with airfare being as expensive as it is now, it's an easy drive to Long Beach. And uh, depending on if you're going on Carnival, Princess, Royal Caribbean, there's quite a few options that will take you through to the Mexican Riviera. So these are basically um, some of the things that we like to do when we visit Cabo. Um, there's kind of a, a breakdown for anyone, depending on your budget. And be sure to watch the entire video because I'll give you some uh, valuable information, hopefully important information that will help you avoid being left behind because the last thing you want to do on a cruise is miss the ship. So if you haven't been to Cabo before, Cabo is a tender port, meaning that the uh, they don't have a pier large enough for cruise ships. So cruise ships will anchor in the bay and then they will use water shuttles or tenders. They typically call them water shuttles now. And in Cabo, they specifically call them the Cabo tenders to basically bring you from the ship into the marina into Cabo. And it's, it's actually using the Cabo tenders. I remember going to Cabo as a kid. Uh, typically, back then, you always used the, the lifeboats that were on cruise ships to get to and from. And getting from the cruise ship onto the lifeboat was always a little tricky, especially because those are boats are a little bit smaller. These Cabo tenders are rather large boats. If you're having mobility issues, you can typically just take a scooter or a wheelchair and roll right onto one of these larger Cabo tenders and um, you have easy access to get into Cabo and it just makes the whole process a lot easier. Plus the boats are bigger. So if it's a windy day, there's a little bit, uh, if it's a little choppy, um, it makes that transition and that ride into Cabo or back much better because I have seen a few people uh, experience some seasickness on those smaller boats. The other thing to keep in mind, because this is a, a tender port or a water shuttle port, um, depending on the cruise line you're with, depending on how they're doing this, uh, the, the process of getting you on and off the ship, and depending on how many cruise ships are in port that day, I've seen as many as three cruise ships in port at the same time. Um, it can get a little congested and the service can slow down. If they're trying to get two, 3,000 people off of two to three ships, um, there's only there's only so many Cabo tenders available. What I always suggest doing is find out what the cruise um, ship's policy is as far as um, using the uh, the water shuttle service. If they offer priority uh, boarding, if you're if you're with a um, an excursion that's organized through the cruise line, you will get priority um, disembarkation. Um, but if you're going off on your own. They typically will hand out water shuttle tickets sometimes the night before, sometimes the morning of. So find out what that policy is because that can save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. And if you're not in a huge rush, you either want to get off the boat right at the very beginning as soon as they announce that the uh, you can go to shore or just give it an hour um, and then go to shore then. The only uh, hesitation with uh, with that is that you typically have very limited time in Cabo. So you really want to maximize that time. Uh, especially if Cabo is like the last port of your seven day cruise and you only have one sea day at the end of the cruise, then you typically leave Cabo earlier in the day because you, you need to get back up to Long Beach um, and, and you need that day and a half, that extra few hours at the end of the, the, the day at Cabo to make it back. Now, if you're, if you're arriving to Cabo and it's the very uh, first port of your cruise, meaning that you're gonna go to Cabo Mazatlan and then Puerto Varda, you typically have more time in Cabo, which is nice, 
that's my ideal situation because you can get back on the boat typically by 6, 7 p.m. depending on the, uh, the schedule. And it just gives you a little bit more time in the afternoon. As far as currency goes, um, pesos are obviously preferred, um, but everybody, especially in Cabo, they'll take your dollars. The only downside that, with that is that sometimes the exchange rate is not as good. So if you're gonna make any purchases, you can usually use your credit card at ATM. That'll give you the best exchange. You might wanna get a few pesos from the local ATM, but make sure you're using a legitimate bank and not just a random freestanding ATM because those can run into some issues from time to time. If you don't wanna get pesos, then just use dollars, but just make sure you um, negotiate all your prices up front, depending on what you're doing, whether it's an excursion or a taxi or a water shuttle, whatever it is, uh, negotiate the amounts up front so you know uh, clearly how much it's gonna be um, before you set foot in their car, water, taxi, the boat, whatever it is you're doing. So if you've never been to Cabo before, um, what I always recommend people do is go do a, uh, a tour of the Ark, which is a big rock formation. You'll see it. It's outside the cruise ship if you're in the, uh, the cruise port in the, uh, the marina right now. So there's a bunch of different activities you can do in Cabo. Um, you know, Cabo is really big on uh, fishing. If you, once you arrive and you look through the marina, you're going to see some amazing fishing boats. Um, so if you're really into fishing, um, that's something you can consider doing. I would probably book that in advance. If you Google search, you know, Cabo fishing excursions, you'll be able to find a bunch of different options. Um, look on um, websites like TripAdvisor for feedback. Um, Cabo is a great spot for fishing of the three ports. Cabo is probably going to be the one that um, you find the most activity as far as um, being able to catch fish. And then um, the other thing that's very popular to do is whale watching. A lot of people do that as well. Puerto Varda is also a very popular option for that. A lot of it depends on the time of year you're going, so keep that in mind. The other thing too is renting a like a private yacht, going out with a group of friends, like 10, 15 people. Those three items, I definitely like to um, organize those in advance so you can get off the, uh, the cruise ship and go directly to wherever you're going. And you don't have to do that through the cruise line. You can do that all on your own. And in fact, I would recommend that you do just about every excursion on your own. The only excursion that I, uh, that's part of this Mexican Riviera, itiner Mexican Riviera itinerary that I would suggest that you do through the cruise line is the one in the, uh, the Puerto Varda video I mentioned. Whether it's uh, whale watching, fishing, going on a yacht, going out to the Ark, going to the beach in Cabo, all that stuff you can do on your own. Whale watching, you'll find that you can usually find a boat the day of if it's the time of the year and you can just quickly go out there with a group of people and you may get lucky and have some really spectacular views uh, de depending on the, uh, the migration and what's happening. What we typically do and what I always suggest, especially if this is your first time to Cabo, and it's very affordable, very reasonable, is to, when you exit the uh, the water shuttle, you're gonna be right there in the middle of the marina and you're gonna have a lot of vendors, a lot of people coming at you from different angles. Um, in the description of this video, I'm gonna put the contact information for someone that I personally met and talked to a few times. Um, so if you wanna organize this all in advance, you can work with him, he's great, he's a nice guy, you see him a lot in a lot of the Facebook groups. But other than that, when you exit the water shuttle area in the marina, you're gonna be getting a little bit bombarded with options and ideas. And what I, what I typically always suggest people do on your first time is to negotiate a water taxi, which is really just a water shuttle or a glass bottom boat that can give you a tour. It can take you out to the Ark. The Ark is a big rock formation that you'll see. You can see it from the cruise ship when you're anchored in the, in the uh, marina there. There's a hole in the middle of the arc that's very popular. You've seen it on a lot of videos and photos, postcards and whatnot. And then there, um, you've got some different options. Now, if you want to just do like a water taxi, a quick little tour, take some photos of the arc, um, and then get dropped off at the beach, you can typically do that for like 10 bucks, 10, $15 a person, depending on the size of your group. Um, they'll take you out to the arc. You'll put around there for a little bit, 10, 15, 20 minutes. 
and then they'll go across the marina and they'll drop you off at the beach. And then if you want to go to the beach at the Ark, which this really has a lot to do on the conditions. So there's uh, they have Lover's Beach, which is a beautiful beach, but if the break on the surf is a little too rough, it's gonna to be too difficult for you to get in and out of the boat and it's gonna to be too much of an issue for, uh, it's gonna be a safety issue for the, uh, the glass bottom boats to basically unload you and then load you back up. So if it's a calm day, and you can tell if it's a calm day by when you, um, when you arrive on cruise ship, on your cruise ship, just look out your window, your cabin window, your balcony or wherever you can, and then look over towards the rock formation and if you see white um, break along the sand there, um, it'll give you a good indication of how rough the sea is. And if it's not too windy, that could be a really cool little spot to go and just take some photos, spend 20, 30 minutes there at the beach. Personally, I wouldn't spend a lot of time there because, again, it's a beach that disappears when the, when the high tide comes up. Um, so there's not, you know, there's not any services there. There. Um, Everything that's at the beach is what you bring to the beach, but it's a fun spot to explore, get some photos, and again, um, check it out. And if you don't really want to get off the, uh, the glass bottom boat or the water shuttle, um, what you can also do is go snorkeling. A lot of these guys for $15, $20, again, depends on how many people are in your group, um, will take and let you go snorkeling around the rocks there for maybe 30, 40 minutes, an hour, depending on how much time you want to negotiate. Um, you're also going to be typically on a glass bottom boat, so you can see a lot of fish without even having to get off the boat. Um, but that's also something that's fun and really, you know, affordable, doesn't require a lot of, uh, expense. And it's a, it's just a fun thing to do. What we typically do when we arrive to Cabo, because we've done those water taxi tours and snorkeling quite a few times is we take a water taxi. Uh, a cra straight across the, the marina to Medano Beach. It's $5 a person one way, and there's a $1 per person uh, port fee as you exit the, um, the marina there. So basically for six bucks a person, you can get a water shuttle, water taxi, straight across the Medano Beach. Um, before you pay the vendor, I always suggest just make sure the boat, the water taxi is there, because sometimes these guys that are, well, all these guys that are selling stuff on the pier, are not the guys that are actually going to drive you over there on the boat. Um, they want to keep selling, which I understand, but you also don't want to be standing on the port or the pier for 30 minutes waiting for the water taxi to show up. So just have them um, confirm that the boat is there, get in the boat, see how many people they want to, because um, sometimes if you're like, let's say a group of four, they might wait for another 10, 12 people to make that, um, that, water shuttle run a little bit more affordable for them or lucrative. So just find out how many people are they going to take over? How long is the wait going to be? Get in the boat and then you can pay them. Um, hopefully you pay them as you're pulling away from the pier and headed over to the beach. And so that's like a six, seven, eight minute um, boat ride over to Madonna Beach. And then what we do when we arrive at Madonna Beach is we typically go to one or two places or sometimes both. There's a beach bar there, which has a uh, breakfast and lunch and seafood. It's called the office. It's, it's the, the food there is excellent. Um, you know, it's a little pricey for Mexico standards, but the food is very good. If you like seafood, you're really going to enjoy the food. And then next door to the office is a beach bar. They also have very good food and it's called mango deck and mango deck is like a, a beach club. Um, it gets a little wild. It's a lot of fun, but it's one of our favorite places to go when we're in Cabo. We usually, we, even when we go, when, well, typically when we go to Cabo on a, like a land vacation, a regular vacation in a resort, a lot of times we'll maybe only spend a couple of days in the resort and we'll spend a couple of days at Mango Deck because there's just always a lot of activity and there's always a lot of fun. It's not that it's like adults only. We take the kids there, but they, they do water games on the beach. Some of the videos I'm, I'll share are videos of guys that are doing games though they maybe are they have to shotgun a beer and then spin around a pole 10 times and then run 50 yards down the beach and they they fall over sideways into the ocean um there's been some really funny experiences that have uh taken place there in front of mango deck so it's it's a fun spot and i think you'll enjoy it and then depending on how much time you have 
Um, like I said, if Cabo is the first port, then you typically don't have to be back on the ship until five or six o'clock. Um, but if Cabo is your last port and you have to be back on the boat by 2.30 or 3, you may not have a lot of time. So you got to gauge your time a little bit. Um, but what we will do, and also when I talked about the $5 uh, water taxi ride, don't buy the round trip. Um, they'll tell you to just pay um, $11 a person, which is basically $5 there, $5 back, and then the $1 port fee. Don't pay for the round trip because you're never going to find the same water taxi that took you over there. When you're exiting the beach area, getting ready to head back to the ship, and if it's like an hour before you need to be back on board, it's going to be crazy on the beach. There's going to be 50, 100 people, maybe hundreds of people that are all trying to track down their water taxi. They're not, you're not going to find the same water taxi, but there's going to be plenty of guys on the beach. Uh, the same guys you saw in the morning at the marina, you give them five bucks a person, they'll put you on a boat right away and they'll get you back to the marina. Um, that's what we do, but sometimes we'll take a normal taxi into town or you can just walk. It's really only like a 10, 15 minute walk from Mango Deck into town. And the reason we kind of like to do that sometimes is there's a couple um, couple bars in town. Everybody talks about Cabo Wabo, super popular spot. And then El Squid Row. Cabo Wabo, El Squid Row, unfortunately, the best times to go there are like Friday, Saturday nights. Um, on a cruise ship, it's not going to be ideal because obviously you've got to be back on the ship before it really starts to get into prime time at, at those bars. But to go over there, maybe buy a bottle of tequila, take some photos, have a drink. Um, it's definitely worth it. It's worth just checking out. Um, but the food is not that great. I hate to like say negative, but it's like, I hate to say anything negative, but it's a bar and, and it's typical bar food. But it's like the atmosphere is fun. And especially at night, if you go there, if you ever go back to Cabo for a couple of days, um, going there in the evening, is always a lot of fun. So depending on what you really feel like doing, you can get into Cabo, you can go walk around the uh, downtown, you can check out um, Cabo Wabo or Squid Row. And if you don't wanna do that, you can just walk around the marina. The marina is really, really pretty in Cabo and there's a lot of shops, there's some restaurants, there's some bars, you know, just viewing the, uh, the sites. Something else that's very popular is just to do a hike. Um, if you don't wanna go to the beach bar, if you don't wanna um, be drinking, you can do a hike to the top of the arc, which is also really beautiful. There's some beautiful views up there. That's for someone that's a little bit more adventurous, but ideally what we love to do is water taxi over to the office, hang out there, hang out at Mango Deck, typically water taxi back, but sometimes we walk back along the marina, go to Cabo Wabo, go to Squid Row, have a shot of tequila, and then we start to make our way back to the, uh, the marina, the Cabo Marina. And the best way to avoid missing your cruise ship is to be within close proximity of where you enter uh, to board your water shuttle back to the cruise ship. And depending on the schedule, if you're within a half hour or so of your back on board time, there's gonna be a big line. There's just really no avoiding it. Unless you're on a very small cruise ship, you're gonna have a big line. You're talking about getting two, three, four thousand people back on a cruise ship and there's going to be a big line there. I, I found in recent years that it is just there's no avoiding this big line. But what we typically do is we don't stand in line. There's a couple bars right there where you enter to get on your water shuttle. And we'll just sit there at the bar, have a couple beers, have an appetizer. We have the check. It's ready to be paid. Or we have cash that we can pay it quickly if we got to run. So we got we we stopped here. We just got up the uh, the water taxi, and then we ran into our new friends from Long Beach. Not new friends, old friends. Old friends, old friends old from friends the friends first night at the steakhouse. Yeah, at the cruise ship. That's yeah. Uh, new friends. It's like you can't even see your face because we. Were... Yeah, it's like old friends. Yeah, old friends. Here we go. Old friends. Say hi, say hi, babe. Hi. <laughs> and look, there's still a big ass line, so we got time. We can. Maybe have a second drink, who knows? And then I always, I'm always scouting people that are actually working on the cruise ship. So when you're sitting there, a lot of times you'll find that like crew members, I'll see like security guards or maybe officers, first officers, second officers, they're, all, they're actually off the ship, just enjoying some time for themselves, taking advantage of maybe some free Wi-Fi or whatnot. 
And so I'll usually just uh, look at their name badge. And if they're on like the same ship that we're on, I know when that guy leaves, it's time for me to leave. Um, so I'll keep an eye on him. Sometimes I'll joke with them and say, Hey, when you get back on that boat, I'm going to be right behind you. Um, and that's usually when we line up. So when I see the line dwindle down to a hundred people or less, uh, typically these Cabo tenders will hold about a hundred to 200 people. That's when we'll, we'll hop in line. Cause we know we'll probably be back on the, uh, the last water shuttle getting back on the ship. That's kind of Cabo in a nutshell. Uh, again, be sure to get off the boat. I've also, I talked to a few people that are sometimes say, well, we're just going to stay on the ship. And that is nice. You know, you have free run of the ship when everybody's off and you can take advantage and do certain things that maybe you might have a line uh, or a long wait to do um, on a sea day. Um, but Cabo is a, is a beautiful spot to visit. Um, there's a lot of great things to do. Do some research in advance. And if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below. I'll, tr I'll try to answer your question. I'll give you any feedback, any, uh, any advice I can. We were recently in Puerto Varda for a few days. We just did a regular vacation. I didn't take any video or anything, but I was reminded of how much we love cruising. You know, as much as we always enjoy going to a resort and having a, a great time, there's just so many activities on a cruise that we just love, um, especially if you have kids. And it was a reminder of how we are looking forward to getting on another cruise ship in the next couple months and why we continue to do cruising and why I think it's just one of the best ways to travel. But, you know, everybody has a different opinion. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any feedback, let me know below. If you have a question, leave your question below. And I hope this video finds you well and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, do all that and uh, we'll talk to you soon.